Hey, all, thanks for joining. And today we're going to continue our conversation with creators. Uh, we're going to be talking to uh, a person who is prolific on the Facebook uh, group, Paracord Junkies. If any of you have been on there, then you're going to have seen his work. Uh, but before I do that, I want to thank all of my, my new subscribers. Guys, you are just, you're, you're humbling me with all, all the comments and, and the subscriptions. So thanks. Uh, take a moment, if you are not a subscriber, to like and subscribe. But without further ado, I want to introduce our guest today. He, as I said, he is all over Paracord Junkies. He's made some really awesome bracelets and other stuff out there. So, uh, you know, let's just get right into it. So, John, let me ask you, yes, how did you get started working with Paracord? What's your story? Uh, uh, just one day, uh, I had a monkey fist that a friend gave me, and I just started investigating it on YouTube, and I just decided instead of buying one, I was going to make my own. I ordered some string from Amazon, and next thing you know, I realized that I loved it, and I was hooked. <laughs> How long did it take you to make your first one, your first monkey fist? Uh, my first monkey fist took me three times, I think. I was doing it, undoing it, probably four hours, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, do you still have it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How big? How big of a monkey fist? What was your core? Um, to be honest, <laughs> instead of going maybe one inch, I bought a two and a half inch ball bearing right off the bat. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. You're gonna hurt somebody Probably, with that thing. Well, it's just for looks. It's I just know. for bragging rights. I would never suggest using it. <laughs> I I made one for my mom one time, and because uh, she likes to go for a walk, and there's a lot of people who let their dogs, and she's got dogs, and I made a just a little one with a little like one inch marble. Just so if some other dog comes up and attacks her and her dog, she could use it to hit, you know, just not kill the dog, but just at least hurt it enough that it would back off. And sure, my absolutely. But, yeah, and my brother was swinging it around and he let go of it and it put a dent in the drywall. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I, had, I didn't know it, it could do that much damage. So, but yeah, they're fun. Yeah, they're, they're fun. So, <laughs> I mean, so you, you, you started with that. What, what was, what was next for you? Bracelets? Did you go into lanyards? What, what, where did you go from there? Um, I went right into bracelets. I had, I had purchased a bracelet probably a good 20 years ago and I just liked it so much. I kept it forever. It had like a mohawk, it's basically a cobra weave with a raised center, like a mohawk. And I loved it. And uh, I had just stumbled upon that packed away in some of my stuff as I was messing around with making the monkey fists. Uh -huh. So I decided to try to recreate that bracelet. And uh, I, I don't think I've really made much other than bracelets since then. Maybe a few dog leashes and collars, but I just, I love bracelets. I love making bracelets. So what do you have a favorite weave that you use for those bracelets or, 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 or what do you do? Um, I'm really all over the board, but uh, I just recently stumbled upon the vampire bites from Cetus and I'm really stuck on that bracelet right now. I love the weave. I uh -huh. just love his design. Uh huh. What do you think? The... Right now, that's my favorite. Gotcha. What, 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 is, what do you think is the hardest What's been the hardest project or weave for you to really master? Um, for me right now, I'll be honest, I'm working with Manny's first book and and I'm I'm really having trouble with the predator and I don't know why. <laughs> so where are you get where where do you learn your knots? Did you get a book? Did you are you pretty much using online sources? What are you, what are you doing? I I do a lot of YouTube. I, I just recently start buying books. Uh -huh. For the most part, I've been mostly just YouTube videos. What do you, uh, 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 
what it, what is the do you find it easier because you can kind of rewind it and see how they do it or is it just because YouTube's really easy and you can just pop it up on your phone and go or yeah I think it was just easy access for me uh-huh. I think that was the the biggest part uh, I think I'm starting to realize now that I like the books because I can take my time with it if I have to and I can I make sure things are right and where they're supposed to be strings are laying right you know I am starting to really like the books, I think. What books do you would you recommend uh, to everybody listening? Uh, I love the pull type books. Uh, um, I've made a few from Cetuses, but um, I, I really like the pull type books. Pull type? Okay, I, yeah. I'll have to check that out. I haven't seen those. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, there are some people that start with paracord and then they move over to leather or, you know, they, they work with a lot of different stuff. What is it about paracord that you like over other materials? Um, I, I, most of my experience is really only with paracord. I'm just now, I've been buying some of the Atwood boxes and it comes with all the larger ropes. Uh-huh. And I am, I am now starting to investigate and work with different strings and bigger ropes. But um, I think power cord is mostly, that, that's all I could really speak on that I uh-huh. would have experience with. Do you have? So I just, I prefer the way it lays. I like the 550 uh-huh. I mean, pretty much the most. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, now, do you find that you're go, do you go with a pattern, single colors? Uh, what do you tend to, what do you find you buy most of? Uh, uh, I, I, I'm a 30 year painter, custom house painter. Uh huh. So, I, so I, I have really good knowledge with colors. Uh, I like crazy bold colors. Uh huh. So do you go with like the pattern, the crazy patterns, or are you more of like, I'm going to merge a, uh, a, uh, a, a neon orange with a bright purple and, uh, you know, dick a Manny weave and, and, and merge the two together or, or what, what do you, what do you prefer there? I, 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 a lot of times, I, I guess I would have to say, I usually use probably one string that's a multiple color string uh-huh, uh-huh. and, and then throw a couple colors in there that I, that, my opinion accents with sure. the multiple string so are you using like for the accent are you using micro or are you using 550 with that no I, i'll use 550 i do use micro here and there mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. like it. it it adds a nice little detail so when you're doing the micro though do you find that you need to also have a micro fid or do you just you just work with what you got yeah, I just use a lacing needle. Okay, okay. I hadn't thought about that. I'll have to. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, um, yeah. I pretty much use the lacing needle for all my uh, my detailed stitching. Okay. So have you have, have you uh, have you done anything like really interesting as far as like or really difficult? as far as like a bracelet or anything like that with paracord that has really challenged you? Um, yeah, yeah, I would say the, I would, I'm having a little bit of issues with Manny's book. I've come to find most bracelets are pretty easy for me, but uh-huh. his, his seemed to be a little complicated. Um, um, most of the bracelets I do, like, honestly, I, I probably got to do it two or three times before I get it to where I'm satisfied that it's laying right and things look the way they should. Mm-hmm. That concludes part one of my interview with John Prescott. Look for part two coming next week. Until then, keep paracording.